Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate day number 1062, 1062, March the 4th, 2020, Wednesday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Alrighty, well you know it is Wednesday and of course that's the day that I take out the trash and have some chicken and this will be no different than any other Wednesday. So here in a little while, I'll be taking out the trash and having some chicken. Maybe you should do the same, unless of course it's not trash night, but you should have the chicken. Now let's get to the news of the day. Of course, today's Super Tuesday. Well, it's actually yesterday was Super Tuesday. Today, we're going to talk about Super Tuesday. And as a matter of fact, <laughs> I don't even know what the results are yet because it is about 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday night. So the polls are uh, still uh, open in quite a few of the states. Uh, we've only got a couple states so far that they've announced. So there's still a lot of them out there that we don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you who's going to win most of them anyway. Save you the uh, hassle. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and get to the news of the day, and then we'll get to the uh, Super Tuesday stuff. Okay. It looks like we have, um, looks like we find out uh, yesterday that uh, the Trump campaign is going to sue the Washington Post for millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. And they're going to do that for fake news, particularly the fake news on the Russia hoax. Uh, which they ran a lot of fake news stories on the Russia hoax, and they've never corrected it. In fact, they keep pushing it. And that's why Trump uh, campaign is going to sue the Washington Post. Now, of course, it was just a couple of days ago that we learned that the Trump campaign was suing the New York Times. Now, this is a very good strategy uh, because, and it is a strategy, um, it's not because the Trump campaign needs millions of dollars. No, it's because the Washington Post and the New York Times are two of the premier uh, propaganda uh, uh, pieces for the left. And they have every intention on pushing propaganda and more Russian garbage throughout uh, the 2020 election campaign. And the, and the Trump campaign wants to make sure that they do not do that. They're going to shut them down. And they're going to shut them down uh, by getting them involved in, this, in these legal cases, which will likely be going on through uh, the election season, and they'll likely get a clamp put on them by the judge. Uh, no more Russia hoax stories. Um, during the during the hearings, because if they come out and start running more Trump Russia hoax stories as the case is playing itself through court, that's probably not going to help their case any. So it will shut them up. And at the end of the day, it's very likely uh, that Trump uh, the Trump campaign will win these cases anyway because they have overwhelming evidence, overwhelming evidence that both the Times and the Post ran fake news stories about Russian hoaxes when in fact they knew. See, that's the key thing you got to remember here. They knew that the stories they were running were lies. They knew it. And Trump's uh, Trump campaign lawyers can prove it. So, there you go. Now, the next story that I uh, uh, have here is one we talked a little bit about last week. And it has to do with Rob Bl Blagojevich. We'll just call him Blago. It's much easier to say. So, he teased. He was on a couple shows last week. Uh, and he was teasing about the fact that there's certain things that he knows um, about um, the Obama administration and some corrupt people at the FBI and DOJ who kind of set him up in a, in a sense. And um, he said that there will be more coming out. So obviously he's getting ready to write a book. That would be my guess. But we get a little bit more from a couple interviews he did yesterday. So obviously he's given us some thought. He's probably consulted with an attorney, and uh, now he's going to go out and do some more news shows, and he's going to try to um, get his his narrative, let's put it that way, his, his narrative, he's going to try to get it out there and get some action going and get some people who want to invite him onto other shows and ask him questions. And my guess is that he's trying to probably get Congress or some independent journalist to look into the claims that he is making. So to understand why, let me give you a little bit more information about the interview he did yesterday. So Blago is looking to drop the goods on Obama and the corrupt FBI and DOJ officials who set him up. And who are we talking about, the corrupt FBI and DOJ officials who set Blago up? You may be familiar with them. You've probably heard their names before. They are um, Jimmy the Weasel Comey and Uncle Bob the Executioner Mueller. That's right, it was Comey and Mueller 
who did the setup job on Blagojevich to cover for Obama's crimes. Does that sound familiar? To cover for Obama's crimes, they set up Blagojevich, Blago. Now, that's a lot like what they did uh, when they covered up the rotten Reverend Clinton's crimes and targeting Trump. And then, of course, covering up their own crimes, targeting Trump and everyone around him. So, Bob Blago, in this interview, is claiming that he was a patsy and was used to cover up Obama's crimes. Blago says he has tapes. He has tapes. Tapes. <laughs> but he says that he is legally blocked from making these tapes public. So he has tapes but there's some legal injunction against him that will not allow him to reveal these tapes, which is why he wants some independent journalist or Congress to look into it. Then maybe he can give them the tapes. <laughs> you can bet that he'll be leaking stuff from those tapes if it gets to that. Now, Blago, of course, is looking for a way to, in his opinion, get the truth out. Well, let me tell you this, Blago. Uh, you better get that information into the hands of some people you trust and uh, activate the kill switch because you just may be needing it. Um, because coming out and saying that you have information but you can't let it, let it out is not a safe thing to do. That's not a safe thing to do. Very, very brave or very, very stupid. I'm not sure if I know which. But one of the two is taking place there. He's either a brave man or a very stupid man. And uh, that's the last thing in the world you want to do. When you have information that could be damaging to very powerful people, you don't tell them you've got it. You come out with it. And if you can't come out with it, you keep your mouth shut. Or you try another way. You leak it to someone else. But normally, when you do that, when it comes out, the people who you're after know where it came from. It's a very tricky business that Blago is involved in right now. He better be very careful. I wish him all the best, but he be better be very careful with the people he's playing around with. And yes, he better get that information into someone's hands very quickly or start and let them start leaking it. I don't think there's very many members of Congress who want to touch this. That's my opinion. And probably not a lot of journalists who want to touch it. It's dirty. It's a lot of dirty stuff going on there. But if you got a blago, you ought to dump it on somebody. You better not sit on it now that you talked about it. Well, we learned yesterday that uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee, Lindsey Graham's committee over in the Senate, has deposed the first witness. Uh, we do not know the name of that witness. Lindsey Graham says he's not even sure which one of them it was because, of course, it's, you know, the Senate has, uh, and Lindsey Graham has his own, uh, you know, investigators that work for the Senate his own staffers who are, you know, lawyers or, you know, investigators or what have you. And they are the ones who actually do these depositions. You know, Lindsey Graham doesn't actually do these depositions. Um, he reads them once they're done. Uh, but we do know that the first uh, witness uh, was deposed by the Senate Judiciary Committee uh, uh, as it pertains to this investigation that uh, Lindsey Graham wants to do, that he's been talking about forever that he finally looks like he's doing a little bit. We'll continue to follow this. There's about 20 some odd witnesses on the list. Don't know how long it's gonna take him to interview them, but I assume what Lindsey Graham was telling Mar Maria Bartiromo is that first they'll interview all these witnesses in a deposition style interview, and then they'll take all the answers that they get from all these people, then they'll have all that information, and then they'll start calling people in for open hearings and uh, asking them questions and they'll use the information from these depositions to determine what questions to ask and how to respond when Comey and Rodenstein and all the rest come in and lie to them. Next, we have uh, Rand Paul uh, telling Lou Dobbs that uh, he has spoken with Trump and that he says Trump is not going to sign the FISA uh, renewal without reform. Now, as you know, uh, they are trying to pull some trickery. Uh, fuckery, as I call it, in uh, D.C. What they're trying to do is attach this FISA reauthorization 
onto the coronavirus funding bill. That's dirty pool, that's dirty politics, and that's what's done in the swamp. And I don't think Trump's going to buy into it. And I don't think many members of Congress are going to be amused by it. You do not take something like coronavirus, uh, a virus which needs probably uh, immediate funding to uh, make sure we have whatever we need, funds available to get whatever materials uh, or what we need to deal uh, with the issue. Because it's not something you want to get out of hand. It could cause a lot of problems with the economy. Uh, could get a lot of people sick or, or, or killed or what have you. This is a very dirty trick. You don't attach something like FISA reauthorization onto the coronavirus funding bill. That's just dirty. And when you see something like that, you just know it's dirty. So I do hope that members of Congress, uh, we have enough of them who will stand up and say, no, 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 we're not going to take this and uh, make, uh, make the uh, House and the Senate go back and redo that bill, pull that FISA out of there, get that coronavirus funding done, signed off on, the president will sign it, and uh, that'll be taken care of, and then we can argue FISA for another day. But there's only nine days left, nine days left before the FISA expires, the four components of it that we're looking at. And I do hope that uh, members of Congress will stand their ground and not get bullied into signing off on it. Let it expire. Let it expire. Uh, I think the FISA court should be completely uh, disbanded. It's unconstitutional. It violates the Fourth Amendment. It, uh, it's uh, been abused. We know it's been abused. And whatever improvements or corrections that they think they're going to make to it, to me, are irrelevant. If What good is it to make new rules if the, if the other rules were completely violated and nothing happens to you when you violate the rules? If there's no consequence of violating the rules, why make rules? Maybe Attorney General Barr can answer that question. When he can answer that question, maybe he can talk me into it. Well, what do we have here? Well, it looks like um, Mr. Potato Head, uh, John Brennan, and Jimmy the Weasel Comey uh, have endorsed Biden. <laughs> now, the funny thing about this is, is that right after Comey came out and endorsed Biden, the campaign manager for Biden came out and basically said, uh, tweeted out, oh, it, not in these exact words, but basically, uh, we don't really want your endorsement, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy the Weasel. Now, obviously, uh, somebody got to him because he pulled that comment and then came back later and said he was only joking. No, I don't think he was joking at all. Uh, many Democrats are no fans of Jimmy the Weasel. As far as they're concerned, they think uh, that he cost the rotten reverend the election because uh, he's the one who came out and uh, publicly uh, admitted that uh, he was going to exonerate her when everyone knows that that's not how things work. Uh, when the FBI or the DOJ investigates you, if they don't find any crimes, zip, nothing. You don't get anything. But he came out and made a statement, listed all the crimes that she committed, then said no reasonable prosecutor would prosecute this. Okay, So uh, he just broke a bunch of rules right there. Uh, he talked about an investigation, which he shouldn't have, which did not result in any uh, legal consequences or any charges. Therefore, it should never have even been brought up. Uh, and, the fact, and, and the fact is, what a lot of Democrats uh, don't talk about is the fact that Jimmy the Weasel uh, and and McCabe did not want to. Uh, they wanted to sweep the Clinton investigation under the rug, but they weren't able to because there was a couple of detectives down in New York uh, who basically were threatening to revolt uh, if they didn't. Uh, and uh, so uh, Comey was forced to come out and uh, and do that. So anyway, uh, yeah. Brennan and Comey endorsing Biden. Why, why should that uh, not surprise us? Let's see. Uh, yeah, here's a good question. Will Obama endorse Biden? Now that the field is narrowed and you only have Commie Bernie, Lundberg, and Biden, with that combination of people, what's Obama waiting for? I mean, he's not going to come out and endorse Bernie. We know that. I don't think he would come out and endorse Loonberg, that only leaves him with Biden. So why hasn't Obama come out and endorsed Biden? He certainly could use it. Uh, uh, an Obama endorsement would be huge. 
but he's refusing to do it. What's he waiting for? How about the rotten Reverend Clinton? She was just asked today and she, um, she hit on Bernie again today saying that Bernie's campaign was baloney. And she still won't come out and give an endorsement. She's another person who could um, have an impact. Why won't she come out and endorse Biden? What's she waiting for? Well, we know she's got not going to endorse Bernie. What, is she going to endorse Lundberg? I don't think so. So why hasn't the rotten Reverend Clinton and, o and Biden and, and Obama come out and endorse Biden? There really isn't anyone else left but Biden. But they still refuse to come out and give their endorsement. And those might be the two biggest endorsements that he could get is Obama and the rotten Reverend. And the rotten Reverend was pressed on it about who she would support. And she said, uh, and well, there's two different interviews where she was asked. One said she would support the nominee and the other she said that she would support whoever is determined to be the best candidate for the party. Now, it's likely going to be a brokered convention because Lundberg was asked today um, if he thought he could win. And he said, well, only in a brokered convention. So it's Lundberg. Uh, his plan is brokered convention because he knows if he gets to a brokered convention, he can look at Bernie and say, well, we know, you, we know that you don't want Bernie. And over here is Biden. Now, here's what Lundberg knows. He knows that Biden is basically out of his mind. He's nuts. He's crazy. He's senile. He's got dementia or possibly even early set in of Alzheimer's. There's something wrong with his mind, his brain. Things are not clicking. This is obvious to everyone, including the Democrats' party and especially Lundberg. He also knows that after Super Tuesday, that there'll be a huge spotlight on Biden from this point forward. He's got to go four and a half months with a big spotlight on him. Four and a half months with a big spotlight on him. How many gaffes do you think Biden will make between now and the convention with four and a half months? And now the big spotlight will be on him. Every little thing that he does and says is going to be, there's going to be reporters following him around everywhere he goes. Getting every soundbite that comes out of his crazy mouth. Think of the number of gaffes. Well, this is what Lundberg is thinking. And Lundberg knows that Biden isn't getting any better. He seems to be pretty progressive uh, in, the, uh, in his decline, in his uh, mental acuity, you might say. So uh, I think that Lundberg is playing the long game. He's playing that by the time people see more and more and more, and they're going to get a lot of Biden in, in the months to come, and by the time it gets to the convention, it will it will be obvious to everyone, and I think it already is, but it will become obvious to everyone that you know you simply can't you simply can't nominate him to be your nominee, especially to put him on a stage next to Trump. He will just get destroyed, and Lundberg can make that case, and everyone will know it's true. Now, here is the problem: you have Commie Bernie will probably have the majority of delegates, um, but not enough to close the deal. You will have Lundberg, who will have practically very few delegates. Um, and then you will have Biden, who will be trailing Bernie in delegates, who have a sufficient amount that with the super delegates, they might be able to push him over the top, maybe. But he'll be nuts, crazy. And so what happens then? Well, if they try to, if they try to go with, okay, you can write off commie Bernie because we know that they are not going to allow him to have the, the nomination because he'll destroy the down ballot and the party. Lundberg will create such a division in the party, the fact that an oligarch can come in and buy the nomination that all the Bernie bros and a lot of uh, Democrats who are put off by that and a lot of, uh, Democrats uh, who are in states that are benefiting greatly from Trump's uh, economy, they're probably not going to vote for Lundberg. They'll probably go for Trump. And so it, it will be very difficult. And, and Lundberg will be seen as a very divisive individual 
by staying in the race and depriving Biden of the delegates he needs to, to so he will be the most hated man at the convention because he's the one everyone's going to blame for the reason that Bernie has the most delegates because Lundberg stayed in the game long enough not to get enough delegates to be decisive but just enough to take delegates badly needed delegates away from Biden who desperately needs them so he's going to be looked at as a very divisive figure and he's not a very popular figure at all so what problem does this create? It creates a problem where there's, there's, there's no way to win for the Democrats. All three of these people are badly flawed. Bernie's a commie. Lundberg will be unpopular and will not have amassed nearly enough delegates to even be considered serious. And they'll be hating on him for staying in the race. And of course, then you'll have Biden, who they will have realized, uh, and they already know this, but it'll be obvious to them, even more obvious, and simply, they just simply won't be able to do it. Four and a half months from now, it's going to be much worse than this today for Biden, no matter how much they try to pump him up. You just can't save the guy. I mean, he's a he's a dead man walking. So I don't think that any of these three are going to be able to be put ahead on the ballot. Now, why is the rotten Reverend Clinton not endorsing Biden? That should be who she should get behind. I mean, Lundberg is not a Hillary-style Democrat, and he's a loser. She's not going to put her reputation behind someone she knows is going to lose and lose badly. She isn't going to go for commie Bernie, so her only choice is Biden. And she could do a lot of help uh, to Biden, give him a lot of help. But she's not doing it. And why isn't Obama? He's sitting on the sidelines as well. And with a lot of other people, by the way. That's because the rotten Reverend Clinton is trying to arrange it so that she puts herself in a position where they do a draft Hillary. Someone writes in her name at a broker convention. You can write in someone's name uh, and, and they'll write in her name and then they'll go to her and say, okay, we're writing in Hillary Clinton. Now this will all be scripted. It probably has been. It's already being worked out right now. Then, of course, they'll put the camera on the rotten reverend who will just happen to be close by. And, of course, she'll have the look of complete shock and amazement. Like, oh, me? Little old me, you want me to come in and, and save the party and unify the party? Well, I just, I, I just, I, I really never thought about this. I, I, I just never wanted this. Uh, I, I really thought it was over. I, I really had ended my political career. Uh, I, I just, but, but, well, I mean, if I must, if I must, if I'm being called into service, if I'm being called into the service of the country, I cannot say no to the country. I cannot say no to all of you. So I guess I'll have to accept my name being brought forth in nomination to be the Democratic nominee in 2020. That is the script that's probably being written right now. That's what the evidence suggests to me. I could be wrong, but I'm probably not. Let's see how it goes. Well, of course, we had uh, Donna Brazil going on Fox News and blowing a fuse and uh, telling Ronna McDaniel to go to hell. Not once, but twice. Now, she was highly offended. Um, Brazil was highly offended that Ronna McDaniel gave her opinion because she was asked her opinion um, on this idea that the DNC is trying to rig it against Bernie. <laughs> and that really ticked her off. Because she said, hey, they're going through the process. <laughs> yeah, we know the Democrat process is to cheat Bernie. Yeah, the Democrat process. <laughs> and, 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 this, and she went into this spiel. You just wouldn't believe it. You actually have to watch it to believe it. Total lies. Now, what bothers me about Donna Brazile is, you know, she's your typical Democrat, so, you know, liberal Democrat. But um, she likes to portray this image of herself as being a good Christian woman. Yet she's on board with the party that supports uh, post-birth abortion. Uh, open borders, all sorts of other horrible shit. She cheated her ass off on, on behalf of the rotten Reverend Clinton and then lied about it. She admits in her own book that she had to call Bernie and admit that they cheated him. She went on TV and admitted that they cheated him. And of course, she herself got caught passing the questions 
to the rotten reverend before a debate. She took part in the cheating. It's also quite interesting that she showed up at the hospital after Seth Rich had been murdered, probably trying to find that laptop. She's a crooked woman. She's not a godly woman. She's not a Christian woman. She's just a bitch. Now, she's a nasty bitch on top of that. And uh, she obviously lost her cookies. Uh, and I can understand why. Imagine if you're a senior uh, in a senior leadership position at the uh, Democratic National Committee and, you've, and you're looking at what you've got on your hands. Because you're going to get the blame when the whole thing goes down. You know, her best move would be to resign from the DNC. Of course, they're probably paying her a lot of money. And that's why she's doing it. Um, but this will finish her off and a lot of other people. Because when this thing's over, um, a lot of these Democrat so-called professional career uh, uh, people at the DNC are going to be uh, broomed out. And you won't see them again. Because the, the disaster that's, that's uh, about to befall them uh, in the 2020 presidential elections, along with all the down-ballot races. Because here's Donna Brazil. She's got Commie Bernie who she knows that they're going to cheat, even though she's on TV denying that they do it. While they're in the process of cheating Bernie, she's denying that they're cheating Bernie. But everybody knows they're cheating Bernie. So everybody knows she's a liar. But she has to go on TV and try to defend this mess. She knows what's coming. She knows she's, that they're going to lose and lose bad. And she knows that whichever way they turn at the Democrat National Committee, they lose. If they go with Bernie, then the other half of the Democrats either stay home or vote for Trump. If they go for uh, Biden or the Rotten Reverend or Lundberg, all the Bernie bros and all the real progressives, which make up about half the party, they all stay home. Either way you go, you lose. The idea that her and other people at the DNC think they can unite the party at the convention, they're out of their minds. The only thing that's going to happen at the convention is the true divide between the party is going to be magnified a million times. <laughs> that's all that's going to be happening at the convention. Um, so yes, of course she's going a little nutty. I don't blame her. Well, you know, this Denver councilwoman that we talked about uh, a couple of months ago, uh, who was, of course, uh, promising to push communism by any means necessary. I'm not even going to say her name because I want to give her the publicity, but um, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, she's now saying that, uh, it, and she put this, I think, on a, on a, on a tweet, um, that if she gets coronavirus, she's uh, she will attend every MAGA rally she can, meaning she's going to try to spread the coronavirus to Trump supporters. There you go. That's the modern left for you. <laughs> well, could you believe that uh, Burisma Joe uh, brought out uh, from the ashes the skateboarder Bobby O? Yes, he brought out Bobby O. You know, you're desperate when you got to pander to Bobby O. How many, how many, how many votes did he actually? Did he? I mean, the guy even is even a one percenter. I don't think he even was in the one percent range. I mean, he doesn't really have enough people to support him. Although he did get a lot of votes in Texas in the Senate race, so I guess that's why Biden's down in Texas and he drags old skateboarder, Bobby O, the skateboarder, drags him up on stage and then pronounces to everybody that it's going to be Bobby O that's going to be the guy in charge of getting rid of all the guns. <laughs> well, I mean, what a disastrous move. We already know that in 33 to 36 states in this country, if you run on banning weapons, and I mean any really type of gun control, in 33 or 36 states, you will lose. You also lose if you go out and tell people you're going to raise their taxes. And Biden has done both of those things in the last 24 hours. <laughs> this guy's going to lose, and he's going to lose bad if he's a nominee, and I don't think he can be. I think he's going to, I think they're going to put him out, or he's going to take himself out, and they'll, and they'll say it's because of medical issues. Medical issues. Biden's going to come down with some medical issues. I think many of them are quite apparent already. So here we are. Uh, it's uh, approaching about almost like 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. The polls will probably be closing. Let's see, California time at 6 o'clock. I don't know what time the polls close in California. 
but probably around 9 or 6, I would think. So probably getting ready to close here soon. But I'm doing this video now, so uh, let's take a look at what's what we know now. We know that uh, at this time, Biden, Burisma Joe has won Alabama and Virginia and North Carolina. What does that tell us? Well, of course, we know that Bernie is extremely weak in the South. So that's no surprise. What is a surprise is that Lundberg did not get enough votes to <clears throat> divide the vote against Biden. So that tells you that Lundberg is not doing very well, despite spending half a billion dollars. And um, we also know, I heard on the radio today, that um, almost half of votes in the states that voted yesterday, almost half the people had already voted in early voting. And that means that uh, booty fudge, that uh, booty fudge, Klobuchar, and um, yeah, I guess those are the two, I guess, booty fudge and Klobuchar <clears throat> were still on the ballot when a lot of these people voted. And um, possibly some others as well, Steyer and some others. So it's hard to say how that's going to affect things, but if a lot of people in early voting uh, already voted before these people dropped out, that's probably not going to bode well for Biden. Now, Biden is likely going to win all the southern states, just like Hillary did, but Bernie will win everything else. And by the time we're tallying it all up on Wednesday, uh, Bernie will have a clear delegate lead, and Biden will never be able to catch him. He'll never be able to catch him, especially if Lundberg hangs around. So Biden has won North Carolina, Virginia, and Alabama. Uh, and ap apparently, it looks like Biden may win Texas. It's going to be close, but he may win Texas. But keep in mind, all these delegates are proportioned. So it's not like... like um, Biden's going to take a huge amount of delegates out of Texas and smoke Bernie. They're probably going to end up with, um, probably Biden will end up with a few more delegates than Bernie in Texas. In other words, the overall gain is not that much as far as how much he gains on Bernie. Probably not going to gain that much on Bernie because Bernie's going to do well in Texas. He'll probably come in a close second. Biden will win, but but Bernie will finish pretty close to uh, to Biden in Texas, and they'll both collect a lot of delegates. But not enough for Biden to separate himself very much from Bernie. California is the big prize, and Bernie's going to win that going away and pick up a ton of delegates. There's 400 of them up. There's only 250 in Texas, 400 in California. California's the prize, and Bernie's going to take it all, and uh, Texas is going to be probably a split, pretty close to a split. We have Sam Donaldson, the old liberal, the old liberal who occasionally pops his head out of the hole, and uh, he says that Biden doesn't know what it takes, or Biden doesn't have what it takes to get in a knife fight with Trump. Yeah, I mean, Donaldson's been around politics a long time. He's a hardcore uh, liberal. He's seen a lot of elections. He's watching Bernie, or, and, or Biden, rather, just like all of us. And that's the conclusion we all draw, if you want to be honest. And, you know, uh, Sam Donaldson is an honest liberal. I don't like him. But I will say one thing, over the years, he didn't bullshit you very much. He pretty much was open about the fact he's a liberal and gave his opinion. And his opinion, a lot like Carville, he's a lot like a Carville type guy, uh, says Biden doesn't know, that doesn't have what it takes to get in a knife fight with Trump. Now, they're interviewing some Biden supporters yesterday who had just come out of the voting uh, booth there from voting for him, and they're in Texas, I do believe. Yeah, they were in Texas. And they come out and they're talking, the reporter is talking to a half a dozen people who just actually just voted for Biden. And they're asking him about issues with his gaffes. And these people all say, yeah, yeah, we do notice we are concerned about his gaffes and his memory slips and all these other things. Um, but he's the best we got. <laughs> yes, that's right. The rotten Reverend Clinton looking better all the time. As soon as she is brought up uh, against um, Biden, Bernie, and Lundberg, she is going to look like a million bucks. <laughs>